Well, hello and welcome back to the West Ham Voice. Thank you for joining me. Um, if you've already watched the uh, the first show that I did, the uh, pre-recorded show, uh, as a replacement to the West Ham Weekly, the West Ham Weekly Bite Size, uh, you'll know that I'm away at the moment. Uh, I'm in Barcelona with uh, the better half. and uh, But I thought I'd do a couple of shows for you to sort of make up for not being uh, able to go live. Um, so this is the second of, of, of the two shows. The first show was all about a, a bit of general news. I talked a little bit about the, the Lyon team and some of the players that they got injured, but then some of the players that they, they've got to replace the, the injured players for the first leg uh, against West Ham in the, in the Europa League uh, quarterfinals. Uh, I also talked a bit about player news, you know, a little bit of update on Declan and uh, Thomas Socek and uh, Arthur Masawaku, etc. So if you haven't watched that show, then please, go, you know, do look at the back catalogue and uh, and watch that show that was uh, rec uh, recorded, pre-recorded and went out to uh, um, on Monday night. This show is either Tuesday or Wednesday night. Uh, I, I, I'm going to set it up and then sort of release it um, uh, whilst I'm whilst I'm abroad. Um, <laughs> I know that sounds a bit odd. Uh, but anyway, um, thank you for joining me. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, hit the like button, uh, subscribe to the channel, if, uh, and hopefully you like the content that I present. So this is all about transfers. And uh, because there's been, you know, very other... Um, no, no other news really to talk about. Of course, uh, social media columns just ramp up all the transfer stories, don't they? And they keep speculating that we're going to buy this player, that player and God knows what else. So let's get straight into it and talk to you about the various transfer stories that uh, came out over the past seven days. <laughs> Sorry about that. I pressed the wrong. <laughs> um, so let's get in. Let's get into it. And the first up, of course, is um, a transfer story that came about uh, in the January transfer window, but it's rearing its head again. Uh, so I thought, well, why not? Um, uh, Calvin Phillips. Um, apparently, the interest is still there. Apparently, West Ham are still hope, hoping to uh, uh, sign Calvin Phillips in the transfer window uh, this summer. Um, now, look, uh, a lot of people say that they don't believe that we made a bid for him in the first place. So uh, uh, is it true? Is it not? 50, he's valued at around about £50 million. I don't know. I mean, we can only go by the stories that we're, that we, um, that we're told. And uh, I'd like to believe that this is the sort of player that we're, we're trying to attract at West Ham and, and having this kind of player playing alongside, playing alongside uh, Declan Rice in central midfield. 26-year-old Phillips um, is the level of talent that David Moyes is alluding to wanting to bring to West Ham United uh, in order for us to consistently compete uh, for a top six finish. Um, I think it's great. Uh, who wouldn't want to bring uh, a player like Phillips to to their club? Uh, of course, um, Phillips has two, still two years left of his contract at Leeds United, and the club and the club value him at something like even more than fifty million pounds. If you think about us valuing Declan Rice for 150 million pounds, then clubs are obviously going to inflate their prices for their players as well. Um, Phillips has made only 12 appearances for uh, Leeds United this season, mainly because of uh, injury uh, and a further three in the League Cup. Um, uh, however, his stats, even though he's only played a handful of games, are still pretty impressive this season, averaging an 83.7% pass success rate, averaging two tackles per game, 1.3 interceptions, 1.6 clearances, which has given him an average performance rating of seven overall uh, for the season in a team that's actually been struggling for most of this season at Leeds United. Leeds are currently 16th in the league with only seven points clear of the relegation zone. Uh, but with teams around them having uh, games in hand, uh, they could bring, they could be uh, perilously close to the relegation zone or even in it by the end of the season. Hanging on to a player like Phillips is quite vital to them. However, if they do get relegated, it will make it doubly uh, difficult for Leeds United to hold on to him. Um, next up uh, is uh, Amadou Onana. Oh, let me just, uh, before I do that, let me just mention briefly this this whole thing with um, players from Ukraine and uh, Russia. Now, there's quite a lot of um, uh, confusion as to what's going on there. Because uh, as we know, uh, FIFA opened a temporary transfer window for foreign players who play in the Ukrainian and Russian leagues, um, saying that, you know, if players can, can get uh, other deals 
the short term, then they're welcome to do so. And apparently we were interested, uh, we were interested in giving uh, Dejan Lovren a, a two year deal, apparently from Zenit St. Petersburg. I don't know how true that is. Um, but uh, there, there are other teams that have been stopped from actually signing players. I think Victor Moses was stopped from signing for, I think, Brighton or some, uh, some team like that. Uh, so it's, it's a bit of confusion that uh, it seems that uh, the Premier League are blocking certain signings from the Russian League. But it's not known whether they would do the same for any signings from the uh, Ukrainian League. Uh, apparently, we're interested in David Neres and Lucina Traore from uh, Shakhtar Donetsk and uh, there, there's speculation that we want to sign them but uh, with this confusion it's 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 quite odd as to as to what may happen and apparently the uh, Premier League have sort of suggested that uh, for the integrity of, of, of sport for uh, sporting integrity that's why they blocked some signings so far so you tell me FIFA have said it's okay but uh, the Premier League are blocking any signings. So whether we sign anyone or not from either your Ukrainian league or not, I, I honestly couldn't tell you. Let's go back to uh, Amadou Anana. Now, Anana, he's uh, uh, the German press suggested last week that apparently we're interested in signing this former Ham uh, Hamburg defensive midfielder. Uh, Anana moved from Hamburg to French club Lille only as recently as last August for a fee of £6.3 million. And he signed a uh, five year deal until 2026. Uh, Onana's uh, value has already increased to around about £10 million, uh, given the performances that he's put in for Lille over, over the past uh, season. Despite his young age, Onana's stock has risen in prominence uh, in, in quite a short space of time. Now, Onana took a, a, a bit of a, 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 an odd route through to uh, getting his, his, his name uh, sort of uh, uh, considered uh, for uh, bigger teams. He developed through the Hoffenheim, Hoffenheim youth ranks before moving to Hamburg, which was in the second division of the Bundesliga. Uh, where he moved there on a free transfer in 2020. He had apparently, he had opportunities to move to teams like Borussia Dortmund uh, uh, and Bayern Munich, but instead moving to, uh, he thought that by moving to the second division, to Hamburg, will give him more game time. And it did. And he got noticed and Lille came in and bought him uh, for £6.3 million. Uh, Lille currently sits sixth in the French League One, so he's doing quite well. He can play as a centre-back or as a central defensive midfielder. Sound familiar? Yeah, a bit of a Declan there. Uh, his move also gave him some exposure to Champions League football as well. Despite being a defensive midfielder, Anana is confident in carrying the ball forward with his great dribbling skills. Uh, he's also a very confident passer of the ball. He has an 82% pass success rate uh, so far this season. Although, although born in Senegal, he's grown up in Belgium and he's represented Belgium uh, as uh, their captain of the under-21 uh, team. He radiates a sense of calm. He's big, he's fast, he's an intelligent footballer with a very good technique, two-footed as well. Uh, and uh, he, he's got a natural feeling for uh, uh, defensive spaces uh, on the pitch. I'm sure you've worked it out by now. Onana plays in the same position as Declan does. However, with the progress being made by Connor Coventry, albeit in uh, 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 League Division 1, uh, I'll ask the question, uh, do we want to bring in a youngster uh, like Onana, or do we already have Connor Commentary chomping at the bit to make his mark in the um, in the in the Premier League uh, with West Ham United? It's going to be interesting to see uh, what happens. And same goes for uh, uh, in in a roundabout sort of way for Phillips. We know Phillips is a great player. Uh, he's already proven that for England, etc. But we've got Connor Commentary uh, doing do, doing uh, some good stuff. Uh, uh, for his loan, loan spell at MK Dons. Will Connor Commentary come back competing for uh, a place in the West Ham team or will we look at buying Phillips uh, instead? Uh, moving on, next one is another central defensive midfielder and one that's been mentioned before as well. Bubakar Kamara, uh, his contract runs out with Marseille at the end of this season. So he'll be a free agent, 22 years of age. Uh, and he is an excellent footballer. Um, 
he's with the France uh, uh, under 21s. He's been represent, uh, representing France in the uh, under 21 squad. Uh, and uh, he's playing for one of the big clubs in, in French football. It's rumoured that West Ham United have had preliminary talks uh, with uh, the players' representatives in a bid to beat off uh, opposition for his signature. It will certainly be a major coup for uh, if we get any anywhere near Kamara to playing for West Ham. He is an excellent player. Uh, we'll get him, obviously, for a lot. He'll come on, on with a signing on fee, of course. Uh, but he'll come for a, a lot less, a lot less than um, uh, Calvin Phillips. And he's an alternative option. Very good stats, uh, averaging two tackles per game, 1.2 interceptions per game. Uh, but he's also a very, very, very good passer of the ball with a 90.7% pass success rate so far this season. He's got great tenacity. He's got great timing in his tackling. Uh, he's a really good technical first touch, excellent ball distribution. He isn't the fastest of players, uh, so he still has to develop uh, his understanding of his positional play to make up for his lack of speed. But then again, Dex isn't necessarily the fastest players, but uh, but he uses his skill and his technique to to uh, best position. He's a versatile player, meticulous ball control, comfortable on the ball. He could benefit uh, playing in a three at the back system if we if we needed him to as well. Uh, and he's a player that could carry the ball out of central defence or central defensive midfield. Similar age to Declan, very highly thought of, um, you know, almost about to break into the France uh, senior squad as well. Um, he could be a very, very good alternative option. Let's go back to defence, central defensive midfield and Joe Worrell. Now, look, um, it may surprise you, but we've been linked to Joe Worrell for something like about two or three seasons. Um, it's possible that the interest was first mooted when David Moyes had his first spell at West Ham United. At 25 years of age, he can now be at the right age uh, to, to take the next step up into Premier League football. Would he suit West Ham? He certainly might be a David Moyes type of player. Um, he, he likes to play passing football, uh, very uh, short passes moving from front uh, back to front. Um, Worrell is integral in that kind of play for Nottingham Forest. Um, despite being fantastic in defence for uh, West Ham, how many times do we see Craig Dawson almost give the ball away sometimes with, with the kind of uh, long passing that he does. Sometimes it works off and other times it kind of goes to nowhere. Forrest uh, also play a similar uh, formation to West Ham United, a 4-2-3-1. Uh, so Worrell would certainly fit into that system. Again, like West Ham, Forrest play a high pressing game. Uh, when Forrest is on the defensive, Worrell is a, quite a conservative footballer uh, uh, and drops deeper to protect the space behind him. But in the Premier League, that could lead to uh, players being kept on side. And we know that players are probably a lot bit faster than they are in the championship. So by dropping there, it could sort of tend to maybe keeping players on side. Having said that, in conclusion, Worrell's conservative approach does tend to ensure that he delivers more stable performances. His good passing ability could also serve him well in the Premier League. Um, look, his stats, including 33 appearances this, se this season, uh, include 1.8 tackles, two interceptions, 3.3 clearances. He definitely takes his defensive duties very well. And despite having being good on the passing success rate, it's, it's quite low uh, at 77.2. Look, he's represented England under 21s as an international and he's got championship league experience as well. Moving on, uh, a player altogether different stature, I would guess, in central defence is uh, Sven Botman. Um, Lil, uh, another Lil player, 22 years of age. Uh, it was suggested last summer and again in January transfer window that West Ham were interested in signing this Netherlands international. He developed through the Ajax youth ranks and moved to Lille in a £7 million deal back in 2020. Botman still's got, he's still got three years remaining on his contract, um, uh, but has fast become one of the most sought after central defenders in Europe. Last season, Botman played his role alongside Jose Fonte, remember him, in helping Lille win the French League by conceding the fewest goals in the league, with 23 goals conceded. With the collapse of French TV rights, many French clubs have felt the pinch and it's, all, it's been suggested that they would cash in on some of their biggest uh, assets, some of their biggest talents. Lille, 
uh, have, have managed to keep hold of Botman so far, but there's speculation that he may eventually move to the likes of either Newcastle, Man United, uh, or even West Ham for a £30 million deal. Uh, he's a very assured footballer, composed and comfort comfortable in possession. He's got a very good passing range with an impressive 88.3% pass success rate this season. And as I said, he takes his defensive duties uh, uh, seriously. 4.4 clearances, 2.3 aerial wins because of his height. Uh, he's a certainly very accomplished defender. And finally, we know that David Moyes would rather have a left-footed uh, central defender uh, to sign, which would get the best out of Kurt Zuma on the right side of defence. And Botman is just that. Now, another player uh, we've been linked to before is, of course, Nikola Milenkovic. Now, we know the protracted deal that was going on last summer. Was it going to be Milenkovic? Was it going to be Zuma? One minute we were about to sign Milenkovic. The next minute we were about to sign Zuma. The deal for Milenkovic fell through. He ended up uh, signing an extended contract uh, with uh, uh, Italian club Fiorentina, and now he's contracted until 2023. The deal last uh, summer apparently was going to be worth about £14 million to sign Milenkovic. Now that he's signed an extended contract, it looks like if we were still interested in him, it'd be uh, a tw a tw around about a £20 million deal. But many feel that that's still a good bargain for a player of his uh, talents. Um, look, uh, apparently he's got a gentleman's agreement to, to leave uh, the club if a, if a good deal comes in for him. But other teams are taking interest into Milan and, uh, and other teams in Italy. And maybe he might want to stay in Italy rather than move into the Premier League. He's uh, physically uh, and, and mentally, he's He'll be comfortable in the Premier League. He's technically and uh, physically and mentally suited for Premier League football. Um, despite the fact that uh, he's got a gentleman's agreement uh, to move, does that mean that West Ham will definitely uh, get him? I don't know. I think uh, it's obvious that David Moyes is interested in the player and it's obvious that he relished, uh, he really wanted to buy him. Um, but uh, I, don't, I don't know. It might be that a, uh, another club like Inter Milan might come in and, and, and snatch him off us. Um, very composed footballer, apart from the, the stats that you can see there, 3.1 clearances, three and a half, uh, uh, averaging 3.5 aerial wins, etc. His pass success rate as well is nearly 90%. He's a very accomplished footballer and one of the few central defenders, the modern day defender that can take uh, carry the ball out from central defence. Right, let's move further up the field. And of course, you know, the speculation is still going on and on and on about Jesse Lingard. We know what's happened with Lingard. He was promised uh, that he was going to get more game time under Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. Uh, and then they got Ranjit in as another uh, manager at Man United. But he's still got not getting any more game time there. We know what he, what he can do for us. And, uh, you know, I put a value there of five million. That was when we might have been able to sign him in January. But Lingard will leave at the end of this season. He'll demand a big signing on fee. There's a lot of speculation that he's going to go and join Newcastle. I still think that lit with Lingard's relationship with David Moyes, that I think he's still be coming to, to West Ham United. Um, Man United career stats, 229 appearances in total, 35 goals, 21 assists. Um, this season alone, 19 appearances, two goals, one assist. We know one of those goals was against West Ham. He's only played 392 minutes of football. I think he's on his way to us. Uh, next up is Gerard Delafoyu, attacking midfielder for Udinese. We'll all be familiar with Delafoyu. We know he played for Everton and Watford uh, in the Premier League. Um, he's still got a contract with uh, Udinese until 2024 valued at around £16 million, 28 years of age. He could be the alternative to Lingard if we don't bring Lingard in. Um, I don't know. I think Delafoyu is an interesting player. I think uh, he, he's probably better suited to Italian football or Spanish football. He's played for some big teams. He's product of the Barcelona youth system. He's played for AC Milan. He's played for Seville. You know, like I said already, Everton and Watford, etc. Um I think he's an interesting player. We know the talent that he has. We know he's got good speed, etc. But I don't know if he'll be defensive, de defensively minded enough for someone like Mo for Moyes to, to be interested in him. I could be wrong. Overall senior career appearances, 255, uh, 45 goals, 49 assists. This season alone, 
26 appearances, nine goals, but only the two assists. And as we can see, Premier League, Spanish League, Italian League uh, experience, as well as being uh, an international, uh, a Spanish international. Moving on to a couple of younger players, Keen Lewis Potter, uh, the Hull City attacking midfielder, contracted with um, uh, Hull, Hull City until 2023, valued at around about 12 to 15 million pounds. 21 years of age. Uh, he's a product of the uh, Hull City uh, youth ranks, a pacey right-footed attacking player who can cut in from the left, a little bit like um, Lingard, a little bit like Ben Rama, I guess. He's direct, skillful, uh, with plenty of pace, and he's versatile. He's played in six different positions so far this season for um, for Hull City. Um, he's, he's played uh, as a right midfielder, a right winger, a left midfielder, a striker, uh, but his preferred role is uh, attacking left winger. Uh, he's uh, recently been called up to the England under-21 squad. He's currently with them. Uh, his career appearances so far for Hull uh, have been 115, 26 goals, 12 assists. And uh, this, so far this season, 41 appearances, nine goals and four assists. He's a decent player. But the one thing I would ask is, uh, with a player like um, uh, uh, Lewis Potter, we've got a player in our in our youth ranks called Armstrong Oco Flex. And so I would question, you know, are we looking to continue buying these players or do we start thinking about maybe utilising some of the talent that we, ha that we have in our youth squad? We know Oco Flex was, uh, you know, a number of teams that asked to, to loan him out in the championship in Scottish League as well. Uh, but we refused. We turned them all down. Um, and I thought maybe because may, uh, maybe David Moyes wanted him uh, to be part of the first team we know he's been on the subs bench a, a number of times but he's yet to be called up for any senior appearances so do we go for someone like lewis potter or do we go for or do we give our youth an opportunity to shine in the first team and the same goes for brennan johnson another attacking midfielder uh nottingham forest very similar to um lewis potter valued similar sort of uh, price range he's a one year younger, contracted with uh, Nottingham Forest till 2023. He developed through the Nottingham Forest youth ranks. Again, pacey, right footed, cuts in from the left, direct attacking, skillful player with plenty of pace. He's versatile as well. Seven different positions for uh, uh, for um, Nottingham Forest this season. Similar to uh, Lewis Potter, playing on the right of midfield, uh, attacking central midfield, winger, right winger, second striker, and even 10 times as a striker. Uh, fast, pacey, energetic, versatile. He's certainly got an, en an engine on him and he's got an abundance of confidence. And he's also um, a, a, a good, uh, you know, he takes his team responsibilities very seriously. He's been quoted as being the next Joe Cole. Joe Cole. Uh, but again, I would argue we've also apparently got the next Joe Cole in our youth ranks as well, in uh, Dan Chesters, who has had a couple of uh, appearances for West Ham United in the senior team this season. I don't know. These are interesting players, but every time I look at them and the more I know about our academy, our under 23s, I keep asking myself, you know, should we be buying these players or should we look, should we be looking at uh, bringing through our own youth players themselves? Next up, Ludovic Blush of uh, Nantes, attacking midfielder, contracted until 2024, valued at around £15 million, 24 years of age. Uh, I talked about uh, Blush as well as uh, uh, Kolo Moani um, uh, a, a few weeks ago during the transfer window. Moani's uh, signed a pre-contract agreement with Eintracht Frankfurt, so he's already going um, at the end of this season. And it could be that despite the fact that he's still got a couple of years left on his contract, Ludovic Blush might be another one to leave uh, Nantes at the end of this season. Look, he's a pretty decent player. Uh, attacking winger, he can help, he does help, and he covers in defensive duties, something that David Moyes would absolutely relish. Um, uh, he's an, His natural player is an attack-minded, but he will drop back and he will do the dirty work uh, uh, for his team if need be. He's, uh, he's deployed as a Ball carrier, very good technique, a very an, an awful lot of pace, very confident player when he's on the ball. Uh, should have more assists uh, despite that. This season alone, he's uh, 32 appearances. He scored 12 goals, but only two assists. But his career stats for Nantes altogether are 99 appearances, 30 goals and just eight assists. And maybe is a little bit of a Ben Rama about him where... 
maybe he just doesn't create as many chances as uh, as as he should do. But he's got a good clean strike of the ball. Uh, he, he 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 plays well. He's got stunning goals uh, uh, for for Nons. He he's a confident he's a confident little player. Uh, and maybe just maybe a player that Moyes might be interested in, given the fact that he is a team player, something that he wants Ben Rama to be. And finally, last and but no least, Darwin Nunes. Of course, you know, we're still interested in the pair, player, apparently. And now the value for him has gone up to a staggering £67 million pounds for, for the 22-year-old. Um, look, we were reported to have made a, a last-ditch bid for him in the January transfer window, but that didn't go through. And now he's worth more. I've already talked about him. He's a Uruguayan international, but he's built like a traditional English centre forward. Uh, tall, strong, defence from the front. He does all the dirty work. You know, he plays, he does, he, he runs the channels. He'll drop back into midfield to uh, help his team uh, with his defensive duties, etc. And it sounds a lot like a young Antonio. I can see if we really are interested in this player, I can understand why, because he would be an Antonio number two. Uh, his Benfica career stats, 77 appearances, 40 goals, 14 assists. This season alone, 33 appearances, 26 goals with two assists. Portuguese League, Champions League uh, experience, Uruguayan international. There's not a lot not to like about him. But if we are serious about him, apparently he wants to move to a Champions League team. If he leaves Benfica, we're not there yet. Uh, but maybe the lure of playing alongside the likes of Declan and uh, maybe the lure of maybe aiming for Champions League next season could attract him to the Premier League. He'll certainly relish playing in the Premier League itself. But I don't know. Um, let's see what happens in the uh, transfer window at the end of this season. And that's your lot. Thank you very much for watching. It was brief, you know, 20 odd minutes long. Uh, like I say, I don't know. I'm not accustomed to doing pre-recorded stuff. So do forgive me for not being able to go into the chat and reading all your comments, etc. But please do hit the like button. Do subscribe if you're new to the channel. That would be re uh, really, really appreciated. I'll be back next Monday. Um, what? whatever that is, 4th or 5th of April, whenever that, that, that day is, and uh, with, with a West Ham Weekly, and it will be back to doing the live show. So thank you all for watching. Really appreciate it. And I'll see you very soon.